I'm Joshua Matias. I'm a contract wildlife technician for Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Um, we're out here uh, radio collaring, GPS collaring white-tailed deer um, for a comprehensive study we have across the state. This is our most northern study area. Um, it's an attempt to uh, figure out mortality and migration on white-tailed deer across the state. There's a science behind it. Um, you kind of have to understand the animal pretty intimately to be able to coax it into a trap or a net and then um, then we'll subsequently ear tag, collar, release and then monitor the deer across uh, across the range and across uh, the different seasons as they migrate yeah. from summer to winter. Deer are a well-studied animal. There's been lots of research on deer. So we think we know a lot about deer and we have management guidelines that we put in place to protect deer winter habitat. However, we're finding that a lot of this habitat's not being used. And so why is that? Are we not understanding something about what the deer need? And by having deer collared, they can tell us what, what they're using and what, what, what's important to them. So we can let them make the decisions as to what is the good quality habitat, rather than relying on uh, reading published literature or management guidelines and trying to understand what we think they need. So we can let the deer tell us what they need. It's all about providing information that's needed. We have technology these days that is so detailed, it allows us to examine the habitat in great detail. We have satellites with uh, telemetry tracking the movements of deer in near real time, which is allowing us to really understand what the habitat preferences of the deer are, as well as locations. Uh, my name is Elias Airy. I'm a PhD student here at the University of Maine. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm working with a, an aerial imaging technique we call LIDAR. Now what LIDAR does is it essentially creates a three-dimensional model of the world. We fly over in an airplane, and an airplane shoots out a laser, and the laser is actually able to measure um, the three-dimensional attributes of the forest. The colored areas in teal and in pink represent areas that we think we're going to find deer in based on the inventories that we've created from the LIDAR. So we can say, you know, there's this many trees in this area, there's this type of tree in this area, and we can correlate that back to where we think deer are going to be. It's always interesting when you're starting a research project um, because you really never quite know where it's going to lead. I think with the team that uh, we have here in the North, Northeast Deer Research Partnership, that there is great potential for really getting a lot of good information on deer. This project has really ballooned in the last, uh, over the last couple of years. Initially it was just the state of Maine, um, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife working to reassess the relationship between winter weather and deer, um, but now it's a much larger project where we're now working with the University of Maine, University of New Brunswick, um, JDI, to better understand um, how deer utilize the landscape and how that landscape or their environment influences deer survival in northeastern uh, North America. It's boots on the ground information that we're collecting here in the Northeast that we can apply to the management of our own animals. Um, you know, it's, it's real-time data and, and the technology um, is allowing us to, to do this. The data collection that will be associated with these studies and, and the reports that result from that will really help inform, uh, you know, our uh, understanding of deer and deer use of habitat, deer survival through the winter. Uh, and help inform our management decisions moving forward and how we communicate and what we communicate to landowners is most beneficial for deer in Northern Maine. I'm not aware of anything being done like this in research, having such so many different universities and uh, government agencies involved uh, on, on deer research and uh, I'm just so excited it's happening <laughs> based right out of New Brunswick confident with this large-scale project over a large region we'll be able to capture many of the issues we'll have a better feel for what's causing population change uh, at those scales and, and hopefully inform management and in what options they have if they want to change things. 
everybody can make guesses about what would be the most important factor from their own experience, but until we actually have locations of deer and we can see what kind of habitat they're using, where they're moving, uh, what kinds of snow conditions are affecting where they go to, and to what extent they're responding to predator densities, and as much information as we can get on, on things like snow depth and predator densities in order to really tease out the, the relative importance of all these factors to white-tailed deer demographic. This project is important to me because being a forester for JDI, I'm responsible for managing deer habitat on the landscape. Data and information gathered through this study will be used by myself and other foresters to promote and maintain quality white-tailed deer habitat 